Good evening and welcome to a WATD Political Forum. I am your moderator, Christine James, and I'm joined by reporter Charles Mathewson tonight from WATD and Donna Rodriguez from PAC-TV asking questions. This election race is for Plymouth County Commissioner with Republican incumbent Sandra Wright, good evening, and Democratic challenger Alex Bizanson, both in studio and they're running in the general election this fall. Timing you all is our own Lenny Rowe, and we're joined by media partner Brockton Community Access. Thanks so much for that. Now, looking at timing, this is something we go over each time. Remember the colored construction paper from back in grade school? That's right. We brought it back. Green means go. We even wrote green on the sheet. Yellow means 10 seconds. Doesn't mean drive faster. And red means, (laughs) I know it's hard to say that without laughing. And red means stop. Um, If you're on red and you're still talking, I give you a five second grace count. If you're still talking... You get the bell if you're talking after that, we cut your mic. Okay, so we try to be really good with the time on that. Our format is very simple. We um, have asked the candidates to have prepared opening and closing statements ready, no longer than two minutes, and a one-minute closing statement. Then we have a round of questions from our reporters here and a lightning round. In the first round of questions, the answers are a minute, and we're timing you on that. And lightning round, which is the best part, because nobody can do it, is either yes or no answers, and the reporter will ask you what they want, or one or two sentences tops. And we try to stick to that and no rambling. And we always tell people, please try to keep your answers to around a minute. And if you consistently go over, ramble, or start to repeat yourself, then you get the bell, as I've already warned you. A lot of warnings here, just like being a fourth grade substitute teacher. Start out tough. That's the best way to do it. We chose opening and closing order out of the official WATD stand-in newsroom koozie. So we will begin with Alex Bizanson, and then we will go to Sandra Wright. We reverse that order at the end. So let's get started. Good good evening and welcome. Uh, Alex Bizanson, your opening statement to our listeners. Thank you, Christine. Thank you to WATD for hosting all these forums. Uh, They're very informative. But my name is Alex Bazanton, and I'm running for Plymouth County Commissioner because I have more than 30 years of municipal and county government experience and the ability to do the job on day one. I am in my second term and currently chairman of the Abington Board of Selectmen. I am the former vice chairman of the Plymouth County Advisory Board. I have been a water commissioner, and I served 23 years as a conservation commissioner. My wife and I founded the nonprofit Hug Foundation to help people in need, and we also founded the Abington Substance Awareness Coalition to help those affected by addiction. I have always been willing to work across the aisle for the benefit of all, and as your next county commissioner, I will meet with all town managers or administrators and the mayor of Brockton to see what the needs are of all of Plymouth County's communities and how the county can help. As your next county commissioner, I will work to alleviate some of the water problems plaguing our small towns. And as your next county commissioner, I will work to expand the county procurement program to help save the town's money. I will look into regional transfer stations and other countywide services that will benefit all of Plymouth County. I have stated publicly that I will never endorse a horse track or a casino on the wooded lot owned by the county. My opponent in this race has endorsed it, even after 88% of the voters in Plymouth voted to reject it. As a matter of fact, the advisory board was notified by the leasee before we were notified by the county, and that's not transparency. If you want a commissioner that will be transparent and record meetings for all the residents to see, then I'm your candidate. If you want a commissioner, that will hold regularly scheduled meetings at convenient times for residents to attend, then I'm the candidate that will make those changes. My campaign is based on my accomplishments, my merits, and my willingness to work with all parties. Thank you. Thank you. That was a statement from Alex Bazanson. Now let's go to Sandra Wright. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me here this evening. Uh, I do appreciate it. Uh, I came into Plymouth County back in 2010. I'll tell you a little bit first about, you know, what I've done. Uh, I started out uh, as the uh, Board of... uh, no, the uh, Board of Health in Bridgewater. Uh, I ran for that and I won. I ran for town council and I won. Then I ran for uh, county government, knowing that I wanted to go on and just do a little bit more for my community. When I ran for county government, as you probably all know, and for some of you who don't know, uh, the system was completely broken. It was shattered. There was just no way, and on the ballot that year, was, uh, was to abolish us. Uh, the t- uh, sheriff's office was uh, taken over by the state. 
Uh, our audits hadn't been done since 2002. Uh, the courthouse rent wasn't being paid, and on the ballot, like I said, was uh, to abolish county government. I have put my blood, sweat, and tears into that, uh, revamping uh, the county uh, commissioners and for the county. I think that we have worked hard and uh, put everything that we possibly could into it. Uh, back then, there were many other uh, uh, obstacles that were in front of us. We also had $1.2 million structural deficit, which we had to work hard. We did go around, we did work with the towns, we did communicate with them, we did go out and do regionalized services with them. Uh, we have expanded our procurement uh, system within our office, and we've done a lot more. We ha also uh, have programs for a lot, uh, for the county. We've um, done many uh, different things as far as, you know, the Municipal Health Group. Uh, we've also done, done the uh, car bid, uh, vehicle bids. Um, I also worked 18 years in the emergency department. I was also a firefighter 15 years. I know what people need. I know what they want. I know what their needs are. I've gone out. I've listened to them. I've been a good listener, and I continue to do that uh, throughout the time that I am going to uh, be a county commissioner. I look forward to serving you for the next four years, and Thank uh, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. That's Sandra Wright with her opening statement. Now let's go to questions, and let's go to uh, Donna Rodriguez from PAC TV. Questions for our candidates. Thank you, and thank you for having me here tonight. Um, my first question for you is, in looking at county government today, what do each of you feel are the top challenges facing county government right now? Let's start with Alex Bazanson. Well, some of the, um, well, COVID has taught us that we need to do more regionalization. And uh, that includes, uh, like I said earlier, a transfer station, uh, the water issues that are plaguing the towns. These small towns can't handle some of these things on their own, and they need help doing it. And that's the purpose of county government. I want to see a lot more uh, regional services um, and, um, you know, whatever, whatever the town needs. The county should be the conduit between um, the federal government and the local government, and they should be the ones out there on the forefront of uh, helping solve some of these problems. Okay. Same question for Sandra Wright. Thank you. I'm glad you asked that. Uh, when I first came into county government, uh, the first thing I did is when I uh, hit the ground running, I started going out talking to the towns about regionalization. I don't feel that back in 2010 the towns were all on board about regionalizing. I don't think that they really felt like they needed or wanted to give up services. Um, but I think over time it has definitely come into play and they're looking at more resources as far as regionalization. Um, uh, and also one thing that Mr. Bazanson said is that uh, I never, ever endorse the horse track or the horse racing. I don't know where you came up with that. County government was uh, put out a proposal, and we accepted the proposal. Just, it's simple. We accepted it. Uh, we had no choice. They were the only ones that responded to it. So we were obligated to give them a three-year study uh, and to find out what we could do with that 100-acre lot down there. I never endorsed anything. And... I don't know why you say such a thing when you, in the 12 years I've been a county commissioner, you've never been to one of our meetings. Okay. I'm gonna, Alex, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to say where you got the idea that uh, you said okay, that first you didn't. Of all, okay. um, I haven't been to one of your meetings because you never can hold your meetings when you advertise you're holding them. That's, want me to go to, through the list? Sure. You, again, you got 30 seconds. And you could have voted no on that contract that you gave because the proposal said horse track in the contract. Okay. Do you want a 30 seconds to say about your meetings that you never hold them when you say you're supposed to? Yeah, I, I have no idea. Because he's never been to a meeting, he has no idea when we have our meetings. The only thing I can say is back uh, uh, at one point, we thought it might uh, help the communities to go into our communities and hold a meeting in their towns. Uh, after going around, doing a road trip, as we called it, uh, a lot of people didn't show any interest, and we didn't really think that it was in their best interest. So we went back to County Plymouth County and held our meetings. Other than that, we've always had um, our meetings posted and, and uh, up for everybody to see. Okay. All right. Any follow-up questions, Donna, for that? 
the the question had been the top challenges, and I heard regionalization and then going in different directions. I didn't okay. really hear, hear an answer of this is the number one challenge or the number two challenge in the county right now. Okay, so you want to you want to ask that again? If I if I, I get can. something more specific, I, let's start with San, let's start with Sandra this time. Thank you. So I've always been an advocate for regionalization. I think that there's a lot of things in the towns they you know are overburdened by so many. Uh, different aspects that they have, you know, fire, police, and teachers, you know, really drains or drains the um, the towns. I think that there are certain things that we could do. We do regionalize. We do a lot of our, our, our you know, vehicle bid for our community. That's regionalization, really. Uh, we do the snow, um, the salt melt and stuff. We regionalize for that, uh, helping our housing authorities. Uh, and there's a lot more. I've talked to my town managers. I start from the letter A and go around the alphabet a bit to all my towns, meet with the managers, and, uh, you know, I talk to them, you know, what what they think, and also with all this money that's come in, how do they feel that they're going to handle things after this, you know, it's done? Uh, we've talked about um, simple things as far as the um, dog offices, you know, maybe we could re regionalize that, maybe we could regionalize, um, you know, doing uh, excise taxes, maybe we could regionalize um, a, a lot of different things that the towns have. Thank okay. you. Same follow-up with Alex Bazanza. So two of the biggest challenges I see and that I would like to see the county take a more active role in is the trash or transfer stations and water. Those are two issues that affect almost all the towns. Brockton doesn't have a water problem, uh, but the trash uh, is a huge uh, budget buster in the town of Abington and other towns. So I would like to see some regionalized transfer stations um, that we can bail the um, cardboard and bottle bottles in different bins and different things and the town the county could probably make some money on that I mean the recycling is down now but it's going to come back and there are still some, some things that are uh, being recycled and the other big issue is water and the PFAS in the water. And the towns need some help doing that. We can't do it on our own. So I think the trash and water are two of the biggest issues that I'd like to help solve. Okay. Let's go to Charles Matthewson now. Questions for the candidates? Uh, preparing for this, I asked people who pay taxes in Plymouth County. I'm uh, oh, sorry. sorry. That's mine. Yeah. Well, this is mine over here. Okay. Thank okay. You. Yeah. Now that we have that set. Uh, I've, I asked taxpayers in Plymouth County at random uh, <clears throat> what, uh, what I should ask you tonight and what they want from uh, county government. And I got uh, answers like, uh, that's the sheriff's department, right? Mm -hmm. No. That's the, uh, uh, what is it? And people really didn't know. So my question after that exercise is, what if county government went away? What would be the difference? What, what would people notice? Alex? Well, I think the people would notice some things. I think, um, you know, um, Treasurer Tom O'Brien and uh, his staff did a great job with the CARES Act and um, the APA money. Um, I think that would have been handled by the state. We wouldn't have received, each town would not have received as much as we did in the uh, time we did. Um, Tom O'Brien did a great job, the staff did a great job, and the uh, uh, outside firm that they hired did a great job. Uh, that would be one thing, and a, a national emergency like that, I think, is when you find out that you need your county government to help you. Uh, the rest of the uh, state, uh, the, the counties, uh, did not handle the money, and um, they didn't receive as much. Um, I lost my train of thought here. What was the question again? Oh, what, what, what else would go away? Um, and, and the procurement and uh, things like that. that uh, and, and the potential for regionalization of a lot of services. And I think if the county is uh, run correctly and we get more regionalization, people are going to start realizing that the county government is working for them. Senator, what if the county government went away? Would people notice? 
I think there'd be a lot of hardship with, uh, throughout the, the different towns. We do service our towns a lot, and uh, we do help them in a lot of different ways that in any ways no two town, uh, towns are, the, are alike. Um, I think Mr. Bazanson had said uh, about Treasurer O'Brien's office doing such a great job. Uh, I sort of take a uh, little offense to that because I think it was a whole team that put that together. It wasn't just uh, the Treasurer's office, and he did do a fantastic job, but it was also the three commissioners, and we took a big heat about taking the uh, COVID money that we had put in for. Um, it was not favorable at that time at all, and but we knew, and the commissioners were all in unison about, you know, what we had to do for our communities at that time. We knew what they needed, and we knew that this was even a part of maybe getting in and regionalizing some of the services and helping them with some of the things that they needed. So we took a big hit from a lot of people, all of our representatives and, and senators and uh, the governor and, and so many other people, including you. And um, I endorse it when Mr. Hanley called me. And um, so I think that, you know, we take great pride in what we've done and how we stuck our necks out there and did a lot of things. In fact, I'd like to have you tell the public, you know, how much money did we actually give you and how many test kits did we give you, Mr. Bazanson? Okay. We're, we're going to ask the questions tonight, but I want to give you 30 seconds to uh, respond to the first comment she made. Mr. Hanley called me prior to um, the county getting the money. I was, uh, I believe I was still on the Board of Selectmen then, or I was running, and he asked me my opinion, and I said, I think it's a great idea for the county to do this. Mm -hmm. My opponent in the primary, you may have me confused with, was against it, but I was in favor of this from day one. And we got uh, about $2.3 million, I believe. Okay. I want to do a uh, follow-up question about considering we're on the ARPA funds. Can you... Um Sandra Wright, let's start with this. Can you explain the, this is a two-part question, so I'll give you a total of two minutes. First part, can you explain the audit process regarding the administration of the ARPA funds? And the second part is, do you think there needs to be another one? With the APA funds, mm -hmm. well, um, I don't. I, right now, uh, we've gone out and told our towns. You know, when we it first began, do not spend the money. You've got three years to spend the money. Get to your towns, get with your boards, and get a plan going. There are a lot of moving parts with the APA. Um, I was very concerned in, in going and taking the APA money because of the moving parts. That, you know, today it's one thing and tomorrow it's another thing. So the towns haven't. They, they took our advice, thank goodness, and um, they are taking their time on it. And uh, they are going to their boards and they are getting, you know, seeking uh, what kind of projects that they want to do. They do have to apply, you know, on the application for what their needs are and what their uh, uh, plan for the money is. Um, and I'm sorry. So, that, so, you, so that's, what you, that's what the audit process is regarding the administration of the funds? Mm -hmm. So do you think that that's enough and there needs to be another type of a more formal process? No, it goes through different, many different steps before it even gets to the treasurer. Uh, you know, we make sure every I is dotted, every T is crossed, and uh, we make sure that the project is legit. And um, we also uh, have the opportunity to know that, you know, when there the town's audit comes up, that we're p positive that it, it will be okay. Uh, we don't want anybody to go into this and, and have a project going that shouldn't be. So we're very strict on that. We have a lot of people looking at it uh, before it gets down to the treasurer's office. Okay, Alex, same question. Can you explain the audit process regarding the administration of ARPA funds for Plymouth County? Um, I can only do it from a selectman standpoint. And um, it is the um, ARPA is much more difficult than uh, the CARES Act. The CARES Act, we spent the money, submitted invoices uh, on an application form, and uh, we got reimbursed for it. The ARPA is, um, well, there were two parts of the ARPA. Each town got a check directly from the federal government, and uh, I'm on the committee that's spending that money now. And um, then we can submit to Plymouth County for um, infrastructure and um, broadband and, um, you know, several other things, but it's much more restrictive. And uh, I know it is because my town accountant is having a problem getting reimbursed for a street sweeper that uh, I spoke with uh, 
Tom O'Brien last week, and I guess that's being resolved. But it's just learning the process for it. Um, but I'm not sure if you're talking about an outside audit company to do this or what. Whatever, but whatever you think is yeah. the second part. Do you think there needs to be another one or a more formal uh, type or a different type of an audit? I think I, I trust the treasurer's office and the uh, outside firm they have working on this. Okay. And you feel the same, Sandra? Uh, yes. Okay. We also have the audits at, at the end of the year that will tell us, you know, okay. how we did. And remember, you're listening to a WATD political forum here. We've also got our uh, media partner here, Brockton Community Access. And it is the race for county commissioner. We've got the Republican incumbent, Sandra Wright, and we have Democratic challenger, Alex Bizanson. Let's go back now to Donna Rodriguez from PAC TV. Questions for the candidates. Thank you. Uh, I've, I've heard from people tonight, as well as in other situations, kind of leading off of Charles' question, what, if people really understand county government. And for me, it leads to a question, is there good communication? Uh, is the Are the commissioners communicating well with their towns and with their residents? Um, so I'd like to know first from each of you if you feel the county is communicating their information well. And maybe secondly, if there are holes, where do you think improvements can be made so people have a better understanding of the work that's done? Let's and start with you, Alex. Um, I don't think the county is communicating well enough. Um, and it'll go back to the um, minutes and the meetings. I mean, on August 11th, they stated the next meeting would be August 25th at 5.30. That meeting never happened. On August 11th, they said there would be another meeting September 15th at 1 p.m. That meeting was actually September 16th at 12 p.m. They met July 21st on, on a Thursday at 5.30. They met on a Tuesday, August 2nd at 8.30 a.m. They met on a Friday, September 16th at 12 noon. And they met on a Thursday, October 13th at 5.30. There was nothing consistent there. And the meetings are not televised and not recorded. And I think that is a huge problem. Every selectman meeting, I believe, in every town is recorded. Board of Health, Selectman School Committee, Everybody meets at a certain night and a certain time every month, and the people know when they can go and see these meetings. Okay. Same question, Sandra? Yes, please. I'm so glad you asked me that. Uh, there are times that we have to change our schedule, especially with the CARES Act. We had checks that had to get out by a certain date. So obviously we had to call different meetings at different times in order to get the signs checked or approved by the commissioners and then signed by the, uh, um, the treasurer. So there are occasions that we've had to change our, our schedule, uh, no doubt about that. Uh, but it was only to benefit uh, the community in getting their checks that they so needed. And we also had a time limit. Uh, I think that was coming up by September that we had to get all the money out. Um, so it, the crunch has been difficult lately, and I think you just talked about August and se September. That was a very difficult time for us. And um, But we did what we had to do in order to uh, get the job done for the communities that needed the money. Um, Sandra, more specifically, do you th you're talking specifically about meeting schedules. Do you think the county communicates well with its residents? And if there are challenges, where do you think the problem areas are? Or where uh, their improvements could be? Yeah, no, I, I, I think we communicate well. And I know he mentioned about the PAC, and, you know, we're not uh, uh, taping our meetings. We reached out to PAC, and they had uh, told us that if we recorded our meetings, they would certainly run it. We're very grateful for them doing that. We don't have the resources to do that right now. If PAC or anybody wants to come in, that would be perfectly fine with us. Um, and as far as communi communicating with the count, uh, the different uh, com communities, I we've been out there. Uh, I can tell you that we've been on a road trip uh, continuously uh, with our town managers. As far as going out into the supermarkets, like I'm doing 82 hours a week right now, go out talking to the people, communicating with them, educating them about what county government does, because nobody does know what county government does. But, um, uh, you know, there's not much more we can really do other than go to the town managers and go to the board, uh, select board meetings and, and uh, just discuss what we've done. And we, you know, we've presented a whole lot of checks uh, to the town meetings so everybody in their community would know. Thank you. Okay. Charles Mathewson. Let's get to the hot topic. Uh, <clears throat> Jared Valenzuela, one of the three commissioners 
recently said that the uh, woodlot that some people think would make a fantastic woodlot, um, he said that uh, the commissioners would entertain uh, other uses other than a racetrack, um, a convention center, a baseball stadium, uh, et cetera. I have a, a two-part question. Is that is he speaking for himself, or are you uh, open for other uses of that 100 acres? Sandra. So um, this is something that uh, Commissioner Valenzuela has challenged. He's taken this on, um, and I support it. Uh, I'm not for or against. Uh, I think I need to give the company uh, the three years that we gave them to do their due uh, diligence. Uh, there has been topics uh, on uh, several different things, uh, probably about 15 different items. You know, a convention center, like you had said, you had mentioned, a county fair, um, and so many other things. There's a biotech for the, uh, that wanted to come in also, I heard, uh, for cancer research. Um, I think that they're all great things, um, you know, but I can't make any opinion of any kind until I actually see uh, what they come in uh, stating sh the, that they should do with the 100 acres. Um, I think that something has to uh, go in down there that is only going to benefit all of the communities. And apparently Mr. Bazanson is against bringing his town in 3% uh, because I'm sorry. Alex, same question. Well, I'm not against uh, my town getting 3%. I'm against a horse track and a casino, like I publicly stated. Um, realistically, eventually something will probably go in there. Um, but before I would ever vote for anything to go in there, I would need to see the infrastructure plan for that area. That is a heavily congested area now. They have 3,000 apartments being built behind Home Depot there. and. 300, um, and uh, there there is tremendous amount of traffic there now. And you add another three to 600 cars a day, it, it's it's going to be at a standstill. So I would not endorse anything until I saw an infrastructure plan there. And the people have to realize it still has to go before the Plymouth Selectmen uh, Conservation Commission, probably zoning board, and definitely planning board. So it's a long, long way off before anything will ever be built there, and uh, Plymouth is still going to have the final say. Okay, the follow-up is when this question came before the uh, commissioners and a number of uh, people in the neighborhood uh, showed up to protest, uh, they were cut off, uh, and there was a second meeting with Commissioner Hanley downstairs in the county office building. Uh, and he said that his whole motivation was that it brought in uh, several hundred thousand dollars to the county. And that was his only concern at the time, was that the county would be receiving $450,000 uh, Dollars and that that would benefit the 27 communities. So I wonder what would happen uh, if, uh, in in these three years, to that $450,000, uh, would you favor giving it back to the communities in the form of recommending that the advisory board uh, reduce the budget uh, assessment? Um, or how would that money be used? Sandra. Well, right now it's a feasibility study, and uh, they are uh, using our property. Uh, as far as what we would do with that, I don't think that that's come up in a conversation right now, uh, nor with the uh, developers. Uh, as far as, you know, we have negotiated a 3%, um, whatever the revenue might be uh, coming in from whatever's developed there uh, would go out into our seven t uh, 27 communities. And I think that that's fair. I think that's for not only the town of Plymouth, but it's also for the 27 communities. Uh, it's, I kind of think of it as, you know, money that's given over and over year after year, which is good. But we have to make, very, uh, make it very clear that, you know, a horse track is not 
the only thing that is talked about going in there. And people are unfortunately stuck on that. And for Mr. Bizanson to make an opinion, I think that's wrong, especially if he was to become a commissioner. Uh, he would have no vote in that. Would you reduce the assessment? Would you recommend it to the advisory board reduce the assessment to the towns because you have this windfall? Of the $400,000? Yes. Um, I just don't have any opinion right now on that. I, you know, like I said, I've not taken the lead on it. It's the commission of Alan Zola's. Uh, my, my thing is I'm doing a gun range. Okay, Alex, if you are elected, would you reduce the assessment to the towns? I think that would be a, a good option to show the town, um, to help out the towns a little bit. I think um, each town pays a different amount um, uh, based Ab on the real estate bill. right so Abington's number I don't have it on the top of my head here but each town would receive a different amount based on the real estate value yes and um, I don't think that's a bad idea to divvy it up between the towns it is a windfall it's not uh, in the budget um, as income yet so um, I think that would be a great idea and I think it would help out the towns although I think Abington is and I say Abington because I'm a selectman in Abington, but I, I think it's uh, forty or sixty thousand dollars a year, something like that. That would certainly help a little bit. Okay, we're going to take a quick break here. Go to the commercial break. We'll be back in a couple minutes. You're listening to a political forum here. The race is for county commissioner. We've got the Republican incumbent Sandra Wright, her Democratic challenger Alex Bazanson. We'll be back right after this. Hey guys, uh, I am Tyler Posey, and I am going to be sharing a personal uh, story of, of mine with mental health and just kind of dealing with awkward silences um, and friends helping me out through it. Almost three years ago, uh, I lost my mother to breast cancer. She was just there for me more than anybody, and I would go to her for everything. And then when she died, I kind of, I, I felt like I didn't really have anybody to go to. I think humans need to break down and cry every now and then, and I, would do that with my mom, and then after after she died, I felt like I had no one to do that around. You know, my friends, you know, I gotta be tough in front of my friends, in front of my brothers, in front of my dad. I would go to work, and then I would go home. There were a bunch of times where my, my, my best friends would, would hit me up, and if I, you know, wasn't looking so well or doing so well, they, they would bring it up and be like, hey man, are you okay, what's going on? I'd be like, yeah, I'm okay. I wouldn't really get into it. And I realized that, you know, that didn't make me feel any better. When I get depressed, I feel like I'm a burden on people and I don't, I don't want to burden them with my problems. And so once I got over that, I was able to open up more with them and, you know, we just have these great deep conversations now whenever we're feeling sad. I even have a tattoo. It's a tattoo of two hands shaking like this and it has a lot of different meanings, but to me it means literally to reach out to my buddies when I'm in need of them. If you know somebody well enough, it's kind of easy to tell if something's a little off. One of my buddies just recently um, has been going through some stuff. Whenever I would have a party, he, I could just, he would kind of isolate himself in, in the back and just kind of, uh, I could tell that he was down. Sometimes I, tr I try to um, let him come to me first and, and see if he wants to, uh, you know, ask for help or say, hey man, I'm kind of low right now. Um, but if he doesn't, I'll usually reach out to him. It's always kind of awkward to start that conversation. Um, but now I think we've gotten comfortable enough with it and, and I, I've seen the good that it does. So I, I try to get rid of that awkward feeling and just kind of go right for it. It's easy to forget that reaching out to your friends really kind of almost immediately makes things better. Therapy is something that I discovered a few years ago Then I started doing it a lot and, and I'm, I'm a huge fan of therapy. I kind of use myself as an example. I say, hey man, I've been to therapy and it, you know, it works and just talking your, your, your feelings out, getting everything off your chest, that's therapy in itself. If you recognize that a buddy is kind of struggling or you yourself are, I know how hard it is to, to reach out for your own reasons. I had my own reasons why it was hard. Just do it. Um, it, it is kind of an awkward situation and not the most natural, but I think we have to get over that and make it a really natural situation. So just do it. Just just um, kind of face your fears and ask somebody. It'll save a life. Save mine.
That's right. I'm back. We're all back here in studio. It's the Race for County Commissioner. We just took a quick break. We're asking questions tonight. I'm asking questions along with Charles Mathewson from WATD and Donna Rodriguez from PAC TV. And of course, we've got the folks with us, our media partner with Brockton uh, Community Access. Thanks to everybody for being here. Of course, the candidates are both here too. Democrat Alex Bazanson, Republican Sandra Wright. Right before the break, we finished up with Charles and now it's my turn again. I like to get right down to the nitty gritty with things like this. After we talk so much about uh, county commissioners and over the years, you know, I admit I take my pot shots at county government all the time. I, I make no I make no bones about that. Why do you want the job? What's the payback for you with a job like this, Sandra? Well, I'll first tell you, when I uh, came in in 2010, I left, uh, and after being elected two years later, I left a job making $50,000 to 7200 a year. Uh, I was very passionate about it. I knew that there were some things that needed to be corrected, and um, we need to make, make a difference. Um, I worked hard, and I, I knew what the communities needed. And um, I, I knew I could fix it. And I think in, in my lifelong, what I've done is I've always been a fixer, you know, on the uh, fire department, working in the emergency room, um, doing so much and knowing what people's needs were, to listen to them, to be able to understand what their needs are and help them in any way that we possibly can. That's always a challenge to me. I love the challenge. And um, I certainly went out there and did the very best I could to uh, start communicating as we talked earlier about communication uh, there was not any communication I think I, I you know made that become happen to our uh, 27 communities that they did appreciate what we were doing so uh, I will always thank you just if you could remove your hands from the oh, microphone I'm sorry, sorry. <laughs> just makes a scary noise on the broke, audio that's okay no nobody here is being strangled she's just touching the microphone that's okay <laughs> Same, that'll come later. No, uh, same question, Alex Bazanson. So uh, why do I want the position was the question. Yeah, what's the payback? Um, I mean, it seems to me it can be a very thankless job. Well, why selectman is a very thankless job. Conservation Commission is a very mm -hmm. thankless job. But I was able to accomplish things on both those boards and the Water Commission. I'm a proactive type of person. I don't just go to the selectman meeting and approve minutes and uh, vouchers every two weeks. Um, I see a need or someone approaches me with a need and I find a solution for that. When I first got on the Board of Selectmen, someone um, very passionate wanted a dog park. So we found nearly $200,000, I think it actually ended up being more than $200,000 from the Stanton Foundation and we built a dog park and I led the charge on that with another selectman. Um, the substance abuse, uh, and I've said it on this uh, station before, uh, great uh, register of probate, Matt McDonough, took me to a forum when I first got elected uh, selectman, and um, I saw the need for substance abuse coalition, so I did that. I worked on the rail trail. I got uh, 500,000 gallons of sewer for the town of Abington from uh, the city of Brockton, so I can do things. <laughs> Let's go back now to Donna Rodriguez. Questions for the candidates, please. Thank you. And kind of to feed off uh, what Christine just asked, you know, you, you both clearly are very passionate. You both want to do this job. It clearly is always hard work and sometimes thankless. Um, so you both have a lot to offer. I'd like each of you to talk about your opponent's strengths and what you think they bring to the table in this position. And I believe we're starting with Alex this time. Well, I don't really have a good answer I'm sorry um, I don't know Sandra that well um, I know she has been on for 12 years and I know she served her town of uh, Bridgewater well and um, I think she's feels that she's done a very good job as a county commissioner for 12 years and uh, we definitely differ on the way I think it should be run and uh, some of the things that have been done there but um, I congratulate anyone that volunteers, Republican, Democrat, or anyone that volunteers to do um, any work. And uh, yes, the county commissioners get paid, but it, it's not a salary. I mean, you're not going to live on it, believe me. Uh, 
So, and, and it was a lot lower several years ago. I actually fought to get them back up to 15,000 when I was on the advisory board from 7,500. So it's not about the money. I think uh, we're both passionate. We just uh, have different ways of doing it. Thank you. Thank Same you. question. I love the challenge. Um, I love being out there. I love working for my community. I love working for uh, the people in the community. As far as Mr. Bizanson, I kind of forgot what the question was at the moment, but I'm going to go back to that. Yeah. Could you yes. please speak to his strengths and what he yes. brings to the table I'm sorry. as a candidate? Um, I, again, I really don't, other than Mr. Bizanson being um, uh, one year on the advisory board, I really don't know him personally. Uh, I know uh, some of the things, you know, that he has done in his town. Uh, I think that, you know, we do differ in a lot of different ways, and, and that's okay. It's, it's good to, you know, uh, differ and always have that um, situation where we can come back and, and uh, you know, uh, differ from our opinions. Uh, but I think that, you know, uh, him being a, a commissioner, uh, what questions me is that I know, you know, back when it was broken, all those years and trying to rebuild it and make it to what it is to t today, why didn't he come in back then and uh, put in the hard work? Thanks. Thank Charles Matthew, welcome. Charles Matthewson, questions? Alex, you brought up water, so let's talk about water. Uh, a recent study shows that uh, more towns other than just the Silver Lake towns are affected in New England, Massachusetts, uh, by uh, climate change, and it will affect local water supply. That was on, um, I heard that on a radio station today. Might have been WATD. <laughs> Great yeah. memory, Charlie. Thank you. <laughs> um, so what about water? The uh, initial... Uh, challenge, of course, is the Silver Lake Towns and Brockton. You said Brockton doesn't have a problem with water. People in Kingston would disagree with you uh, because they're causing a, a, a problem in the Silver Lake Towns by taking all the water from there. What solutions do you see for the water fight within the county? Alex. Well, what I meant was uh, Brockton has a desalination plant, so they don't have... Um a water shortage um, if they were to use that. And um, I, I think the water issue is just going to get worse and worse and worse over the years. So we need to find some long-term solutions. And that could be, as far-fetched as it may sound, but more desalination plants around Plymouth County. And um, that could help solve the problem. Um, there's issues with the salt that it uh, removes from the water. There's other issues, but I, I think it's definitely something that we have to look into. It's not something that will be resolved uh, today, tomorrow, this year, next year. I mean, this is a long-term issue, and it takes some real long-term planning, probably with the federal government, obviously with the state government. But um, the Thank you. Sandy, what would you do um, with water in Plymouth County? Well, I think that this has been a long time uh, problem, and it, it goes back to the individual towns. Uh, when you think of, you know, the piping and everything that's been put in there, it's been 100 years maybe, uh, 120, 100, so. 120 years uh, or more. So I think we, even with the ARPA funds, this is something now that the towns can uh, finally take a look at their water and sewer and, and, um, and see where their most needs are. And, you know, uh, the runoff that we have on a daily basis, you know, the, the sand, the salt, and so many other things that are being wa uh, washed into the, the water system, uh, I think we have to take a look at that and, and see how we can and what we can do to correct that. But I think that's a more of a town situation. Uh, as far as the county, I think that, you know, the funding and any way that we can help them is what we should do. Well, follow-up, I spoke with a selectman in Stoughton on a different subject recently, and we were talking about uh, MWRA coming uh, through Stoughton to Brockton. Would you be um, in favor or opposed to uh, that, Alex? 
I would certainly, uh, that's one of the things uh, we are talking. Um, myself, the DPW commissioner, uh, water superintendent, and our town manager has met with uh, the city of Brockton. And um, we're looking at other uh, ways to, and MWRA has come up. MWRA has recently waived the tie-in fee for all the towns. I think they're trying to get some more towns here. And that would uh, have stopped a lot of towns from going. I know Weymouth is looking into it. I was talking to a council last night in Weymouth. They're looking into it. I think it's definitely an option that we have to look at. Um, I hear it's very expensive, much more expensive than Abington Rockland, but um, we we may well, have Silver to. Silver Lake is free, so. Yeah, well, it's not quite free, but um, it's less than MWRA. Sandra, would you support Brockton hooking up to uh, the regional water MWRA? Again, I, I think that these are just in beginning stages of uh, where the towns are finally sitting down and saying we really have a you know a problem here. Uh, this again is a town thing. I think any way that the county can support the towns in that, I think that that's where that's part of our job. That's what we need to do. We need to find ways that we can help them. But again, coming to the table, looking at other ways uh, that we can correct that, is very important. And uh, I you know I probably well, I don't know you know I I certainly would think that I would support it, but I think that, you know, we would have to sit down as a group and, and uh, study and uh, see where it goes. Okay, thank you. Anything else? Okay. Um, what does Plymouth County government have to do or more of to help or support small business? Alex. Um, that's a good question. Uh, small business is not one of the things I've been concentrating on so um, but like I said you know when I got on the board of selectmen people come to me with ideas and things uh, I, I'm, I'm really not sure how to answer that uh, we have some great uh, chambers of commerce in Plymouth County and um, you know anything we could do to support them I think that would be great uh, we have a lot of small businesses in um, Plymouth County, um, fishing and uh, cranberry and and still some farms that, um, you know, anything that the county could do to help with them. And um, I'm just not sure at the exact answer to that, but we certainly need to um, help them, just like you, our towns help our small businesses. Same question. Sandra, what do yeah, you really I, I, need to do? Yeah, I think, again, you know, it, it goes to the individual towns and, you know, what their crisis is in their town, um, you know, what the uh, people in the uh, community needs to do to help them. Um, they're suffering a great deal. Uh, there's a, a lot of things that these small businesses, you know, they just can't get by with, you know, the higher wages that they have to pay, the insurance coverages, and, and you know, the prices of inflation and food, and, you know, I'm talking about restaurants, but um, it, it's tough out there. We're going to have to tighten our belts up a lot this year, and we may lose a lot more business before we begin to straighten out. Okay. Donna Rodriguez, questions for the candidates? Um, a, fi a final question. You've, you've both expressed some of the things that you bring to the table and some of the things that you, you're currently doing or would like to do. Give me one thing for each of you that you would like to do if you are elected um, as a county commissioner that has not yet been discussed, something that can improve county government and improve situations for residents. Can we start with Sandra? So I'm happy you asked me that because I'm right in the very beginning stages of uh, building a gun range for our police and fire, or for the police right now. I'd like to then extend it out to the fire. Uh, police are facing a whole different way in, in, um, in what they need for training, and uh, so on the fire. These are things that we've never, ever come across in years uh, before. I knowing, you know, being a firefighter, you know, what they're facing and what they're up against. Police also, uh, there is no place or are there there aren't a lot of places for them to go and to train uh, in their shooting. And uh, when I spoke to the company that is uh, also doing a study for me, um, they are actually, I told them, I don't want just a gun range. We do have gun ranges around. I want 100% tactical. Uh, they, need, they need to be able to uh, train for uh, uh, 
biochemicals, bombings, and so many other school uh, situations, which we're not used to fighting in those ways, but it's very important in the future. Same question, yes. Alex. I would like to uh, help out the employees, uh, especially at the Registry of Deeds. Um, the county commission has just approved a contract within the last year with them. And one of the things they did was they gave them Juneteenth, which was required, but they took away a personal day in doing that. It seems that the Registry of Deeds, uh, uh, starting right at the top with uh, Mr. Buckley, is kind of an afterthought with um, the county. And I don't think they get the, the pay or the respect that they need. And um, I would like to see the money increase with the union workers. And uh, I had been in favor of increasing the uh, Register of Deeds uh, um, salary uh, this past year. And it was increased, but not what we had hoped it would be. So I'd like to see some more money going back to the Registry of Deeds because they are a huge part of the budget. Charles, final question? Um, I have so many of them, but I will uh, ask, uh, I, I think, an easy one. What more can be done with the county farm, hydroponics, um, uh, a return of cows, whatever? There seems to be a lot of space that's unused. Sandra? Well, I think, you know, who had the... Um the cows and the horses and stuff was the uh, sheriff and you know we we own the 90 acres uh, of land down there the sheriff uh, runs or has 70 acres um, which you know he did have he took in um, horses that were at the end of their life let's say and you know he's done a great job in the farm uh, we're happy to have him on the property with us and you know there was always that conflict when he went to the state and uh, he left the county uh, we're two different entities um, we have developed a 4-H uh, over on the 20 acres that we have and uh, we are looking to develop that and of course what that does is that also you know helps the kids uh, with throughout the 20 27 communities to get involved in the 4-H and uh, bring their animals in and have some place to go and uh, have a garden and, and uh, hopefully in the future we'll have animals there. Alex, what, is, what more can be done with the county farm? I'd like to see it a full working farm again uh, and there are cows there just so you know I saw them on Saturday. Yeah, uh, uh, 10? Yeah. Well, I didn't count them. I was driving, but there are cows, and uh, I was happy to see that. Um, I, I would just like to see it a working farm, and if it, um, with the um, inmates working it again, if that's feasible, you know, I'd be all for something like that. But it is under um, Sheriff McDonald's control and not the county commissioners. So. Okay. I want to go to our lightning round now. And this is when we will ask questions with either a yes or no or one or two sentences. And as I traditionally start this round of questioning, you know what the question's going to be because I ask it in every for forum. Plymouth County government, stay or go? Stay or go? Stay. Okay. Sandra? Of course, stay. Okay. Lightning round, Charles. Uh, what's your favorite place in the uh, eastern part of the county, given that you're both from the west? Okay. No, Ella? Boy, is it. Okay. I, I always love the shops. I'm a shopper. Okay. <laughs> Donna? Least favorite Halloween candy? Candy corn. <laughs> My least? Yeah. I, don't I don't eat candy. I, Just I can't. name a candy. <laughs> um, I love the corns. Um, I don't even know what's out there. I, um, We'll peeps, just, uh, come on. Um, no. yeah, I, Circus peeps. peanuts. There's no I, argument I with that. Those things are, they're like foam and they're orange. Okay. <laughs> All right. What did you hoard during the pandemic? What did I hoard? hoard. Um, Toilet paper, water, macaroni and cheese? Uh, not... I think just you know, an item, just an item. Lightning, lightning. Hoard, hoard. Um, maybe uh, tissues. Okay. You know, we had uh, just, lots of colds. It. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, lightning. Pizza dough. Okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Donna, what is your current read? I always go to my devotionals. I, you know, for inspiration. And during that time, it was difficult. Okay. So. Alex, uh, I just got the book Helltown from. Uh, okay. Casey. Sherman. What's the news source you couldn't do without? 
Sandra. Lucius, uh, that I couldn't do without. Um, Lightning here. Oh my goodness, <laughs> these are tough questions. <laughs> uh, what I couldn't do without? Um, uh, probably, um, I, I don't know. I, I don't have big needs of much of anything. Um, probably without my um, computer. I'm on it a lot. New source. New yeah. source. Um, I use the, the radio, and believe it or not, I have it on ATD all the time. Okay. That's, That's why I knew about the spam today. I'm very simple. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here's, here's a two-part question. Do you sing in the shower or your car, Sandra? Neither. Okay. <laughs> I was going to ask you, what do you sing? Nothing? No. Okay, Alex. Do you I sing listen in to your, a lot of news. Do you sing in the shower or your car? You don't want to hear me sing. Okay. <laughs> but which one do you sing in? Neither. Okay. <laughs> no singers here. All right. We're going to go to our closing statements now. We're going to reverse the order. We began with Alex and went to Sandra, so we will flip that order. Final statement, Sandra Wright, one minute. So thank you so much for having me here this evening. Uh, I look forward to the uh, elections coming up, and uh, I greatly appreciate for all the people, all the uh, candidates, and I, you know, want to thank so many people who have uh, trusted me in this position for the last 12 years, knowing that I can do the work. I don't do it for self-gain uh, at all. I do it for my community. I do it as best I can, and I'm always open and listening to people out there trying to help people, uh, whether it's a snowstorm and there are people in great need of something, I'm hoping that I can always be available to them um, in, you know, whatever situation that they may have. I also, you know, work on, the, I'm a member of the Suicide Coalition. This is a big deal to me. It's very painful. Uh, there are so many suicides, and, you know, I look forward to serving that community once again and um, helping as many people as I possibly can. I'm, you know, looking forward to uh, four more years, and I have a lot more that I need to get done, and I know I can Thank do it uh, in that time. That's Sandra Wright. Your closing statement now from Alex Besanson. Thank you again to uh, WATD and all our hosts for this and all the po political forums. Um, as an elected official, I view it as one of the most essential duties to express and enact the will of the people. In a democracy, it is critical that the public official reflect the desires and the wishes of the majority. That's what I've done throughout my career as a pu public official in Abington, and that's what I intend to do as your next county commissioner. This forum tonight shows the differences between myself and my opponent, and if you, the voters, want change and want real representation, then I'm your candidate. If you want real transparency in county government, then I'm your candidate. I hope that I have earned your support and trust. On November 8th, you have a clear choice to keep county government as it is or vote for me, Alex Bizantin, and elect a commissioner that actually has a record of accomplishments. To learn more, find me on Facebook or visit my website alexbazanson.org. Thank you. That was the closing statement from Alex Bazanson. You've been listening to a political forum here on WATD tonight, of course, also with Brockton uh, Community Access Cable. The two candidates here for county commissioner, Sandra Wright, the Republican incumbent, Alex Bazanson, the Democratic challenger. Joining me to ask questions, we have Donna Rodriguez from PAC TV, Charles Mathewson from WATD, our engineer, Larry Nelson, and timing you all, Lenny Rowe with the beautiful construction paper there, also another engineer here, and that's Tim McKenney. Remember, this is going to be up on our online tomorrow. Tune in on election night. We'll have all the coverage for all the races. And remember, if you don't vote, you don't have a voice. Thanks for listening.